Frosty Eves and Hales, awesome set. Thank you so much for performing on uh, Valley Advocate Sessions today. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. us. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, first off, uh, could you uh, uh, tell, uh, the, I guess, the audience listening at home uh, on their laptops or cell phones uh, how you guys got started? Um... That's a hard one to answer. It was it's it was this was a band that started as a side project for me, uh, from my other band, and then it, and then as bands do it, the other band, the ambiguities sort of fizzled, and this became more the point of focus, and uh, everything really came together when this guy joined the band, um, and to the point that we now enjoy doing these shows where it's just James me and Suzanne on drums. Uh, I mean, we play with a lot of other people, but it. we also have been working on multiple sets that we can do that are like this. So, I, I think your instrumentation is really unique. I mean, um, just uh, you, you get a, a, a lot larger sound, surprisingly, with, with two people uh, through, through various like effects and um, just instrumentation. Uh, how, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, I, this, I mean, this set is just kind of its own weird thing. Mm -hmm. If you, if we had done, if we, we often play with the drummer, or if we did a rock and roll set with guitar, it would be a different thing. This just kind of, I don't know, it's just sort of evolved. I began when I found and fell in love with this particular uke. Um, I just enjoyed writing short things, and I think it was kind of about, it's got a very limited range of sound, so it didn't feel like it needed to be a long song to be complete. And then that led to the dynamics. I mean, the big part is that James is the one that brings the big sound to it. It sounds really thin without the bass, I think. When I practice it alone, it's a super bummer. <laughs> so that's a big part of the dynamics, is like, it's, it's simple and small, but then the bass is big and funky and in your face. I think one of the coolest things uh, about the songs you played today is that there are a lot of literary influences, uh, Lewis Carroll, Emily Dickinson, but, and then there was uh, kind of the natural influences, whether it was songs about birds or cats or a dog. Um, I, I guess, um, uh, what are you influenced by, whether it's music or, or other things in life? you can make a song just about anything that's that's your great talent is uh, finding uh, a, uh, a sparrow perched above your your doorway and writing a song about that and um, so I, I think he draws influence from anywhere I uh, I receive these songs and I try to put my own spin on them and add my own interesting things but it all starts with him that that almost made me start to cry James <laughs> Um, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> I think this particular set evolved from the the fact that once the second bird song came, I was like, oh, there's a trend. And then we had already had a few bird songs that were guitar bird songs. And then it just became like, let's do an album of bird songs. And I just wrote another two this week. And it's just one of those things that's fun to think about particular birds and then observe them. and. Um, try to capture something about them. Now, do you have any uh, new projects in the work as far as uh, like a new record or uh, planning anything for the near future? Always. <laughs> There's lots of, lots of irons in the fire. Um, you can talk more about that, but uh, you know, we record bits and pieces all the time and uh, find different places where they fit and eventually put them on a disc or on the internet or somewhere take on a life of their own and tell us how, how uh, they want us to use them. Yeah, I mean, we've got, I would say, like, three different full-length albums that are all competing to see which is the first one to get finished, because some of them are um, just a couple of the songs or demos still, and then some are really close. And um, Part of it is that we have this floating rotation of members, and so it's finding times to finish the missing pieces, like we've we've got this guitarist that we've got some songs we want to finish with him that for me it has to be thematically complete um, so yeah the one with Dan we really need Dan to come in and finish those and then we've got the bird one which um, is still evolving and then we're 
got sort of a rock and roll album with drummer Brian um, that's mostly demos at this point, but eventually it will become something wonderful. Cool. Well, uh, I'll, be make, uh, I'll make sure to keep my eyes out uh, uh, for upcoming releases in the future. Um, do you guys have any shows coming up in like August, September uh, time frame? Well, yes, we do, Chris. Uh, <laughs> uh, August 9th, Thursday night, we'll be playing the uh, Coop concert at Energy Park in Greenfield. It's one of our favorite gigs. We love playing outdoors, and it's just a beautiful spot, and the sun sets over us, and we feel like golden gods. Uh, please join us there. And September 8th, we'll be at the <laughs> Montague Book Mill uh, with Austin and Elliot um, for a quiet, intimate evening in, uh, in Among the Books in a place you can't find. It's actually not too hard to get to. That's just their marketing slogan. <laughs> I get lost sometimes, but I'm usually like looking at things in the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again uh, for performing on Advocate Sessions. It was a pleasure to have you guys on. Thank you so much yeah. for having us. This was fun, and it was a um, special treat to, to have this guy totally holding down the sound, because... Uh, I know it's going to sound good, even if we didn't. He'll make it sound good. <laughs> it's up to you, Jared. Make it sound good. <laughs>